Alright, um, for this video I'm just going to do a quick example on uh, doing a ring flip with cyclohexane. Um, this is a typical question and it asks uh, to draw the most stable conformation of cis 1-ethyl 4-fluoro cyclohexane. And the way you approach these, I know it, it may seem daunting at first, you know, you have to predict the most stable conformation, but what you have to always remember is that <clears throat> there's only two conformations. You only have to draw two structures, and out of those, you have to pick uh, the most stable conformation. And it's not hard at all. So the first thing you want to do is draw the cyclohexane. You need two of them because there's two conformations. There's not there's not more than two. There's it's, it's, it's always going to be two of them, and you just pick the most stable one. So what you're going to start out doing is is uh, just drawing the cyclohexane, and uh, I'm just going to draw it. While I do that one, I'm also going to draw the other uh, cyclohexane because, like I said, there's going to be two of them. Okay. All right. So, right here we've drawn the uh, cyclohexane, and that's this part of the question. That's it. We've done that. Now all you have to worry about is this cis one ethyl four fluoro. And when you're doing these, you just want to pick a. Uh, you want to start. You can choose any carbon as being your number one uh, substituent. Just choose a random one. But from that one, you're going to choose what your fourth one is, and. Um, I'm just going to randomly choose that this carbon is going to be my number one and I'm going to put it on this equatorial going up right here. So cis 1 ethyl, my 1 ethyl is going to go right here on this equatorial up uh, uh, position on this carbon. So this is going to be my number one carbon. I will put this ethyl CH2 That's my ethyl. It's equatorial going up, equatorial up, and the other position is axial going down. So now, since that's my number one ethyl, I have to see this. This is done right here. One ethyl is done. Now we have to fill in this four chlor, four fluoro. Um, so if this was my number one, I keep going. This is number two, number three, number four, and so the fluoro is going to go on this carbon right here. Now you have to decide which position is it going to go on. Well, the original question asked for a cis molecule. And on this one, we picked it going up. It was random how we picked it. We picked this, I picked this as going up equatorial on this carbon. So for it to be cis, on the number four carbon, the, fluoro, the fluorine group has to be going up. Since this is going up, it has to be going up. So my up position here is an axial position the equatorial position is going down. So I have to put the fluorine group on the axial up position. Um, and that's it. That's, that's, that's the first molecule. That's its first structure. This is how it's going to be in one of its structures. And um, now it's time for the ring flip. You've drawn one structure. Now you go for the ring flip. All right. So when you're doing the ring flip, all you do, you drew out the other cyclohexane, all you do is move these substituents over. This was up, this was up, it's going to stay up. You just move them over to the next carbon on the other cyclohexane. You're just going to just move them up once. It's still going to turn out to be the same molecule, but it's going to have a different stability because these groups are going to be interacting differently. So why don't we go ahead and do it? All right. This was this was going up on this carbon right here. So when I do the ring flip, I'm going to keep it up, but I'm going to put it on the carbon that comes after it. So this was this ethyl right here going on this one, and it was going up. 
So the carbon after this one, well, it's this carbon right here. And it was going up, so I'm going to keep it going up. So I'm going to put my ethyl group right here. Right? Okay, now for the fluorine. The fluorine was here. It's going to go on the next carbon. It was going up, so it's going to stay going up. So the next carbon after this would be right here. So that's right there. And it was axial up, but on this carbon, your up position is equatorial. So the fluorine is going to go right here. It stays up. This was going up, so it goes up over here. Um, now you're, you're at the position where you can see which one is more stable. And depending on your book, your book will have the stabilities um, for each one. Basically, your axial positions are always going to be less stable. So, if you have two different substituents, you want the uh, more you, you just you want to make your uh, compound the most stable. So, the way you do that is by having your bigger um, your bigger substituent equatorial. And um, if you look in your book, whatever textbook you have, you'll see that this ethyl reacting with this hydrogen and this hydrogen over here will be will have a greater uh, um, energy um, than this molecule right here which has a fluorine coming off of each uh, going to each uh, hydrogen rather um, and I think the uh, average for ethyl group is about um, about four an ethyl to a hydrogen is about four um, uh, kilojoules per mole. So you'll have two interactions: one going there, one going there. So that'll be eight kilojoules. And for a fluorine group to a hydrogen, you'll only have I think it's uh, say it's 0 0.5 kilojoules per mole. So you have 1.5, another 0.5 for a total of one. This was four plus four, eight. So obviously this one would be more stable because it has less, uh, it's less energetic uh, state. Um, and that's basically it. Uh,